Best of r slash malicious compliance episode 93. Subscribe for Reddit videos daily. So, as all of you are aware, coronavirus is a big scary thing at the moment. It's no joke. Norwegian Cruise Lines clearly seems to think otherwise, as they've suspended sailings only up to the 11th of April, and that's where our story begins. Knee equals Norwegian employee. I have a cruise booked for the end of May, and do intend to still go on it, so I called into the Norwegian office after checking current prices and deals. After the usual pleasantries, I start to explain the situation. Me. So, is there any cruise credit being given to travelers that booked before the coronavirus, or any leniency given on refund policy? Me. No. Your best option is to wait it out if you want any refunds. We cannot give you any of the free perks of our current promotion. And that wraps up my first, and second, call. Essentially, a hard no, and just to wait until the date gets closer to see if maybe they'll cancel it or not. For me, that's too up to chance. Enter malicious compliance. Called this morning after the idea entered my head. Me. Hi, you mentioned you have a peace of mind policy. What is that? Me. You can cancel your cruise at any time and be given full credit for it, for use at any time before December of 2021, me, so, you won't give me an upgrade on my current reservation to accommodate for the price difference, but what is stopping me from cancelling with credit, and then rebooking the exact same cruise, just with all the features now included, me, well, the credit system isn't designed to be used like that, me, but can I, me, yes, so, my morning has been spent planning out my now much more luscious cruise, which could have been resolved oh so easily on their end. TL. Doctor, Cruise Line refuses to upgrade my cruise to compensate for current situation. I use their policies against them and get a substantially better cruise for the same price. Thank you. Next. I've read a lot of people having issues with jobs with everything that's going on and it reminds me of an act of malicious compliance that I perpetrated back in the last economic crisis of 2008 to 2009. I worked for a large online website in what we call the operation center. Large websites have many servers, not only in number but in type. A problem is sometimes simple, like this server, really just a computer, is broken. But sometimes, it's complicated. A dozen small problems have happened throughout the system, normally not an issue on their own, but together have become this perfect storm that fucks the whole website and takes it down. These problems are complicated, and often the individual developers are not familiar enough with the system as a whole to figure it out quickly. This is where the operations center are tasked with monitoring the system as a whole and connecting the dots on these larger problems. Different companies may use many names like Service Operations Center slash SOC. Network Operations Center slash NOC, etc. But every large website has this sort of group that acts as the custodian of the interdependent connections of the individual servers. It can take a year to a year and a half of learning how a website works before you're even useful during an outage and many years before you're an expert and have the confidence to lead the shift. We ran 24x7x365 all from one office, in a major city. 1 slash 2 the people were on 4 10 hour shifts, others were on 3 12 1 slash 2 hour shifts, with 5 extra hours every other week to make ATH every 2 weeks, covering the whole week with no on call, as we were staffed 24 x 7 x 365. No need to call anyone at home, there was always someone at the office. I had been there for years and was damn good at my job, I had done several years on 3rd shift and was ready to be done with staying up all night and basically being a zombie on my time off. It's tough to switch from being awake all night to being awake all day twice a week. So a new manager, let's call him Kyle, was hired, and decided that he didn't like the fact we were only getting fucked on sleep. He wanted to fuck us just a little harder, and dry. So he pulls me into a meeting room one evening, when basically everyone except my two team members had gone home slides this paper over to me, and starts telling me that the shifts have to be changed, and everyone has to work 5 days a week, and on top of that, now shift leaders have to be on call during the time period of their shift on their days off, something about understanding common issues that happened during that time of day, on top of this, they were going to expect us to also do some kind of vaguely defined project work while we were on shift or something, 
which with our workload was absolutely ridiculous to expect. We weren't JS or Java developers anyway, which was what the site ran on, so it was asinine to expect us to work on the web application in our spare time. We were ops, and while some of us were good at scripting, this was just a terrible decision. There were already teams there that handled monitoring and build tooling for us to use. The turd cherry on top of this shit sandwich was that he was moving me back to third shift, and I'd be working Wednesday, Sunday, no weekend, and on call at night during my two days off. After all this was laid out to me, I looked at him and said, we'd be working every day of the year, no time to unplug or get away from work. I don't know why anyone would accept this plan as it's laid out. He responded with a smug grin on his face that I will never forget. Well, if you think you can find another job in this economy you're welcome to try. I literally, not literally as figuratively, but actually literally, had to bite my tongue hard enough to bleed to stop myself from saying challenge accepted out loud. Instead I slid the paper back at him and walked out of the meeting room without another word. The thing is that good sysadmins are tough to hire. We're loyal. We have excellent problem solving skills, and we enjoy a challenge. So I kept my mouth shut, started working overnights, and meanwhile contacted everyone I knew about the predicament I was in. I got Kyle to pay for a certification that I'd always wanted. And meanwhile, I was complying with all the maliciousness I could come up with. I landed an interview with someone who'd managed our group right when I'd been hired. I showed them how I'd kept growing as a professional getting certifications and regular promotions. I let slip that the only two days I'd be available for the interview were Mondays and Tuesdays because well, they changed the schedule. And I'd have to keep my phone on as I'd be on call those two days. This led them to ask more questions about the changes there and I have to admit I wasn't at all averse to telling them how this new manager was changing things. I could absolutely see the disbelief on their face, and enjoyed every what? That's not how you run things. This old manager was sympathetic and so I had another job offer in hand within a month of the changes. I left a two week notice on Carl's desk, that said despite the slightly stagnant economy, I have been offered another position. If active in two weeks I will no longer be able to continue my employment with, company. The little shit told me not to come back after one week, didn't even try to schedule any knowledge transfer meetings where we share what we know when we leave, a common thing with technical employees. Cut off your nose to spite your face, I guess. Now he didn't have anyone to cover for that third shift with any experience for months. Mistakes were made, website problems were way up on his watch, which was tracked by another team. He had no one else to blame but himself. He did tell me I was welcome to try. Epilogue. I was always getting stories from the people who were left about dumb shit that he said in large meetings, but eventually he crossed HR. He said something mildly inappropriate in a meeting, and someone went to HR and complained. He then went all in on his stupidity, and, I shit you not here, God's honest truth, pulled that person into a meeting room alone and demanded to know why they went to HR. IMGSRCE equals PKFASAPUM. JPG, he told them stuff like, you come to me first if you have a problem with me and we don't go above other people's heads around here. The person was shaken and the other people in the operations center advised that they go straight back to HR with it. HR wasn't ready to believe it, and clandestinely called others to corroborate. Not only did they say it was totally true, but they all felt free to discuss even more inappropriate behavior they'd seen. Kyle was escorted out with nothing but a box of his belongings that day. Do not pass go. Do not collect unemployment. I don't know what happened to Kyle after that. But that was a bridge I was happy to burn and dance and sing while it crumbled to ashes, and don't give up hope, this too shall pass, businesses know this and will still be hiring for the long term, it will be tough but you can do this, do IT, interview, on video conferences of course, talk to old co-workers and managers, there are opportunities even in times of crisis, look for them, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott, TL, Dr. Manager fucks everyone during 2008 to 2009 financial crisis and says if you think you can get a job in this economy you're welcome to try. I try. I do. I quit. Thank you. Next. TLDR at the bottom. But PLS read. You shall be entertained. Hold on to your hats redditors.
What follows is not something that happened to me, in fact twice a long time ago. Nonetheless this is a most epic story of malicious compliance that backfired in the most wonderful way. So settle down and buckle up. The setting you may ask, why it's a restaurant in New York, the year, 1853. The perpetrator of this malicious compliance, Mr. George Crumb. Now George worked as a chef in this restaurant, and one day a customer sent back some fries. These are way too mushy and not salty enough, says the complaint. George shrugs it off, makes some thinner fries. The customer still complains. This happens three times. By the fourth, George had had enough. You want them thin? Says he, I'll make them thin. So he cuts the potatoes paper thin, fries them to crisp, and dumps loads of salt over them. The customer now demands to see the chef. Out storms George. These are best dang fries I've ever eaten, says the customer. Do you have any more? These paper thin heavily salted potatoes were soon in such demand that they were put in bags and sold. And thus the delicious novelty we know as potato chips were born. TLDR. Malicious compliance creates what is now known as the potato chip. Thank you. Next. I currently work in a nursing home and have been having issues with my shoulder. I requested not to have a certain resident on my list due to her being 300 plus LBS of dead of weight and refuses to help even though she is perfectly capable. They refused to take her off my list, saying that unless I have a doctor's note, they don't have to help me. I went in today, my collarbone, shoulder, two vertebrae, and my hip were all out of place and he diagnosed me with a cervical and thoracic sprain and put me on 20 pounds weight restrictions until the 28th. Work is very upset and not sure what to do with me. I am a temp at this facility if that makes any difference. Thank you. Next. I work in a small local pet store, where we sell crickets. We sell cricket cards. They are basically a card, that has a given 250 crickets. The cards are $20 and you save quite a bit of money by using them. Customers would tell us how many crickets and what size, and we would go get them and scratch off the amount of crickets wanted. The bugs are bought in increments of 10. So someone couldn't get 15 crickets, but had to get 10, or 20. One day, I had a lady come in and ask for 20 large crickets. I ran and got them and handed the bag of crickets to her. She stares at the bag for a few seconds and almost immediately blows up, yelling about how I had tried to rip her off, given her less crickets than she ordered, and all that. She said that she wanted to get exactly what she paid for. She wanted me to count them. Fine. I grabbed a pair of tongs, and another bag, and counted. She got 24 bucks. I apologized and took the extra 4 crickets. She started yelling that she wanted the few extra crickets. I just looked at her and trying my hardest to keep a straight face, told her, you get exactly what you paid for. She turned a maroon color, and stormed towards the door. She didn't know this but, we have two separate entrance and exit doors. She tried to exit the entrance door. I told her that the other door would let her out and to have a good day. I haven't seen her since. Thank you. Next. I used to work in a big cricket stadium in Australia. Wacker for people who know it. I was a runner slash porter, we basically run supplies like drinks foods, plates, basically anything that is needed somewhere from storerooms, kitchens, etc. So I was working in 40 C degree heat, 104 F, on a 5 day match, and my boss comes on the radio and tell me to take 10 bags of ice and deliver it to the players gym. I walked all the way to the other end load up my eye trolley with 10 bags of ice and headed to the gym. You need a pass to go to anywhere in the stadium, different passes gives you access to different areas. However as runners we don't get them and it is generally understood when they see us with black uniforms and big stack of whatever shit we are carrying they would let us in, anywhere in the stadium. I roll up to the gym, and the security guard asks for my pass to enter. I told him I don't have one and no one asked for passes from us and the big boss asked me to take them in and we can confirm it with him. He tells me no. Under any circumstances he can let me in, and the best part is I just have to walk 5 feet in to just put the bags down. I tell him, okay I am not going to take the bags all the way back so I will leave it here, and unloaded all 10 bags in front of him and left it there, called my boss and tell him what happened, and he said he will take care, anyhow, 
With all the things going on he forgot and players are getting ready to start after the lunch and he called me back to ask about the i 30 minutes later. I reminded him and he was angry as fuck and asked me to come back to the gym. I went there and my boss and the security's boss were there already berating the guard, and when I walked in asked me to take the ice in, and I walked 5 feet and dumped the ice in the buckets and left. Thank you. Next. Backstory. I used to live with my mom and little brother who had ads and was always getting in trouble. I have nice paint brushes and acrylic paint that is very hard to get off of cloth. Okay now onto the story one day my little 5 year old brother was getting on my nerves so I shut my door on him. My mom heard and came in saying we don't shut doors in this house. Me being fed up decides to shut my door again and what do you know she yells at me again so malicious compliance I leave my door open and go to my grandma's house and when I come back my mom is covered in paint and our nice red couch has sea green all over it. Let's just say my mom let me shut my door and bought me new paint and brushes. Moral of the story don't fuck with a grumpy teen and her room. Edit. Holy crap this blew up and also I fixed the format and just so y'all know I'm in a better place with my dad who makes better rules.